Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. I'm super, super excited to be able to say that today we're going to be doing a head to toe custom doll, which is something I've never done before. I've kind of dipped my toes into the world of doll customizing. I've done one technically reroute and like a small face up, but I've never done a full doll. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm, I'm so excited for this. Uh, if you have been on my community tab or my Instagram page, then you already knew that this project was kind of in the works, but if not, hi, welcome. That's what we're gonna be doing today. Before I can get to like the fun stuff and the concept and all that, I do have to get out a couple disclaimers. There was one in text at the beginning of my video, but I do wanna say like in audio format, this is not for children. Through the course of customizing the doll, I'm gonna be using chemicals and sharp objects and just a bunch of stuff that is not for kids. So like, please keep that in mind. And even as an adult, if you're gonna try any of this stuff, it's kind of at your own risk, please be careful. <laughs> the other disclaimer is that, as I said, this is kind of my first time doing a big project like this, which means that it's also my first time filming a whole big project like this. And I'm anxious about the camera angles and stuff. So that's also a learning curve. I'm really sorry if some of like the filming leaves something to be desired. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> But with that out of the way, kind of the boring stuff, we can get into what doll we're actually making. So the concept for this, I don't know how I came up with this. I don't know where this came from in my little head, but I wanted to make a series of rainbow fairies. So like each fairy is assigned to a color of the rainbow, but then I also wanted them to be assigned to an object in nature that fits that color. The easiest way I can explain that is to just give an example. So today we're going to be doing the red fairy because obviously we're going in rainbow order. And then the red fairy is also going to be the berry fairy because a lot of berries are red. I hope that makes sense. I feel like every time I say that to someone, it makes less sense. But if it doesn't make sense now, it'll make sense through the course of the video. So today we are gonna be making a red berry, one of a kind custom doll. I'm super excited and there's gonna be a lot to get through, so let's just go ahead and get started. For the Red Berry Fairy, I wanted to use an Ever After High doll as a base. She's meant to be a little chubby and Ever After High dolls have slightly more bulk to them than Monster High dolls, which means I would have to do at least a little less sculpting later on. I chose Apple White due to her skin tone being pale and close to the color in my concept art. The first step, of course, is to just remove the doll of her clothing. I did save her clothes just in case I could use it for something else down the line, but the berry fairy certainly won't be needing it. Once the clothes have been removed, the next step is to heat the neck with boiling water and remove her head. <laughs> While we're in the dismantling phase, that blonde hair has got to go. I start off by cutting the hair as close to the head as possible just using regular scissors. After that is done, I have to go in through the neck hole to scrape out the remaining hair and glue from the inside. This was only my second time ever doing this, and I definitely struggled at first. I ended up needing to use two different pairs of tweezers and then one pair of pliers to get the job done. That's not normal, I just was trying to figure everything out. But after I started to get out a couple of bigger chunks, I definitely hit my stride, and honestly, once I was in the zone, this was so satisfying to do. It took a long while, longer than I'd like to admit, but at the end I am left with a nice pile of hair and a lovely bald head. Down the part line the vinyl was splitting a little bit, but not badly enough for me to not forge ahead. The last step in prepping the head is to remove the factory face paint. I use 100% pure acetone on a paper towel to wipe off most of it, and then use q-tips to get into the smaller crevices. I really had been aiming for like a clean and really satisfying wipe off like some accomplished doll customizers can sometimes get, but in the end, she is a blank canvas, which is all that actually matters. Before I continue on with customizing my doll's hair and face, I need to prep her head with MSC. I spray her outside while wearing gloves and a mask for protection. Of course, that needs to dry, so in the meantime, I turn my attention to the body. Now is probably a good time to mention that while I'm very excited to get into doll customizing, it does involve art forms in which I'm distinctly less skilled. I do all right with painting, drawing, and digital art, that sort of thing. However, sewing and more immediately of importance, sculpting are not by any means my strong suits. I don't think I've actually ever sculpted something successfully, so not what I'm good at. That means that bulking up the doll's body to be that chubby shape that I want is a challenge for me. Nevertheless, we're gonna give it a good go. So to change my doll's body shape, I am using epoxy sculpt. I mix equal parts of A and B together and just start winging it, aided by a little bowl of water to smooth my edges down. 
And after lots of time and effort, this is what I am left with. I added bulk to her hips, behind, chest, and stomach, which I feel like is what most people would think of, but I also added a little bit to her calves, her upper arms, and her neck. Given the starting proportions I had and my current skill level, I actually couldn't make this doll quite as plus size as I would have liked, but I did my best. So now that I've sculpted her to try to achieve that, I have to wait 24 hours for the epoxy to cure. Once the waiting is over, I move on to sanding the epoxy down to make it smooth and flush with the doll's face body. I gotta say, you guys get the nice condensed version of this, but it takes so long to sand her down. Thankfully, I don't have to wait between sanding and beginning to paint the body so that it's all one color again. I am really sorry for the messy background here. I have a designated sheet that I use to protect surfaces when I paint, and as you can tell, it has been very well loved, so just ignore that. <laughs> I just use acrylic paints that I already have on hand, and I begin to build up a white base over the epoxy using paint that has been watered down. I do water down the paint so that it minimizes both the brush strokes and the thickness of the paint, since I am going to have to use a couple of different layers. Also, while we're ignoring things, just ignore my leg whenever it's in shot. I like to paint on the floor. <laughs> After a couple of layers of white, I then add a skin tone paint and realize I messed up. As I said, I'm not an experienced sculptor at all. For some reason, I couldn't tell until I had painted her skin tone, but my epoxy application was not even close to being smooth. So it's a hard thing to do, but I have to go back to the sanding phase. With round two of sanding and painting out of the way, I move on to using pastels and a fluffy brush to blush the body. Even after going at it a second time, she's not perfectly smooth. Some areas like the crease between her booty and thighs aren't as important because that will be covered up by her clothing. Some other areas like her upper arms, I got as good as I could, but I know they aren't perfect. So I'm sorry to any like people who are much better at sculpting than I am in the comments who are viewing this, like knowing that it's not perfect. This is something that I think is just a learning curve. Like I said, I'm just starting to sculpt. I've literally never even been able to make a successful pinch pot before. So considering that, I think that she looks pretty good. And especially once she's actually complete and put together, I think that she's going to look good. Uh, most of all, I'm just hoping that as I continue to make dolls, I'll be able to like apply what I learned making this one to those. But we're just forging ahead because I didn't want to get stuck in an area that I wasn't doing well at and get stuck in the negativity. I thought it would be better to continue on and make this like a positive art experience. Switching gears, it's back to the head for rerouting. This was not my first time rerouting a doll, see my absurd Rapunzel video, but it did still pose a challenge for me as it was my first time doing a more conventional reroute with doll hair. I started off by painting the doll's scalp red to match her hair and help with the illusion of thickness. Then I actually cut the hair hanks in half. The berry fairy is going to have fairly short hair, so this can serve the materials I have to work with while still being plenty long to use for this project. Then I take a bit of hair, pick it up onto the rerouting tool, and stab it into the doll's head. After doing that what felt like a hundred times, I'm finally done! With just the hairline around her head. Okay, now I'm done. Once all the hair has been rooted, it's time to secure it with glue. I have this tacky glue that I'm using and I am being generous. Going in through the neck hole, I make sure the whole inside of her head is completely covered and let that dry. While the glue on the hair dries, let's bounce back to the body. As a fairy, I can hardly leave my girl with no wings, so let's get started on that. I begin by roughly tracing her body onto a scrap piece of paper so I can make a pattern of sorts for the wings. She has three components to each side of her wings, so I start by drawing them all together to make sure I like the overall look and that it fits to scale with her body. Then I take a second piece of paper and trace the outlines of each component separately so I have a pattern for each individual piece. I'll be making each piece twice for a total of six pieces that will then assemble into two wings. That feels like a lot of numbers, but I promise it's not as complicated as I'm making it sound. The next step is to make a wire outline for each piece. Using the patterns I made as a guide, I use a coppery jewelry wire to trace over my drawings, forming the bones of what will become her wings. This took a lot of time and patience, more than I normally have, but after getting one done, the next five were much simpler. And voila! We still have a long way to go, but these are starting to look like wings! To fill the wings in, I'll be using resin. 
Once again, please pardon the background. This is actually a silicone nail art mat, but it works great for resin as well as any spills can, once cured, simply be popped off. That being said, the mat also has been well loved and used, so it's not perfectly clean. To begin with, I'm taking each segment of wing and applying packing tape to one side. Since the wires aren't completely flat, if I were to pour straight onto the silicone, I would have much more leaking out from where I want it to be. The tape helps to form a base for what is essentially a very shallow mold. Now, a lot of the actual resin work I was doing off screen, I'm really sorry if that's disappointing to you guys. As I said in the intro, this is my first time ever attempting to film myself making something, and with the resin I ended up putting a little too much effort into the mixing process, and too little effort into the filming. To summarize what was going on, the resin I use is a two-part mix, similar to the epoxy sculpt. I mix together equal parts of A and B, and then stir in mica powder and glitter to get the effect I want for the red fairy's wings. The part you can see is me then pouring the resin carefully into the wing segments and spreading it around with a little wooden tool I had lying around. I try to make sure that I get the resin all the way to the edges of each wire and also that it's not too thick or too thin, too thin and it might break, too thick and it will lose that sort of semi-opaque look that I'm going for. Once the pour is complete, I leave that to cure for 24 hours in a well-ventilated area. You know what that means, it's time to bounce back to the head. Now, some of you may have spotted the mistake I made in the rerouting phase. I was so focused on other aspects of the doll that I completely forgot that she's a fairy. And for me in my design, that means she needs pointed ears. It would have been so, so much easier to sculpt and paint those on a bald head, but that's no longer possible. So I'll have to tackle the extra challenge of completing that step now. First, I use a lone sock and some sewing pins to mask off the hairline as precisely as I can. This step is necessary for when I give her a new face anyway, and it will certainly minimize the risk of me sculpting or painting into the hair. Then it's back to the epoxy and paints to give her some nice pointy ears. I won't make you watch all that again, instead y'all get to skip to the beginning of the face up. Step 1 of giving the Red Fairy a new face is to use pastels to give her some blush, after which I go ahead and spray on another coat of MSC to seal in the first layer. Next, it's time to break out the watercolor pencils and start actually drawing in a new face. There have been many points during this process that I thought were the part I was most nervous about, and this is absolutely another one of them. Ever so carefully, I start to outline her eyes, get a base color down for her lips and irises, and give her eyebrows. I will say the eyebrows were weirdly the easiest part, which I guess might be good fortune for me. I also do need to apologize once again for a lot of this not being in frame. I have a newfound respect for doll customizing channels to be able to film this flawlessly and get the whole process on because I cannot describe how hard it is to draw and like get my face close enough to draw something this small and also make sure that I'm filming it. So I tried my best. Hopefully next time will be a little better. After another coat of MSC, it's time to move on using paints to build up opacity. This is still fairly slow going as I'm using watered down acrylic like I did on the body to avoid obvious brush strokes. But patience is key in doll customizing, so I start the process of making the whites of her eyes white and building on the color of her irises and lips. I'm using the tiniest brush I have, and honestly, I wish it had been even smaller. Yet another coat of MSC, and we are almost done with the face. This time I was blessed with the uh, companionship of my lovely cat Reese. She wanted to see what was going on here, but was very offended when I wanted to touch her. Bye, Reese. This round I'm using both watercolor pencils and paint. I draw on her eyelashes with the pencils while holding my breath the entire time and finish building opacity in my base colors with the paints. Then I go back through and add details and color variations to the irises and a little bit of shadow to the whites of her eyes. The most satisfying part is getting to add little blobs of white to make her eyes look shiny when it's all done. You guessed it, another coat of MSC later and no more painting! Well, not really. Now I want to make her lips and eyes shiny. I'm actually using this clear nail polish because I already had it. I have better top coats that I use for my nails, so I never used this one. I'm happy it can be of use now instead of going to waste. I just add a coat very carefully over her eyes and lips so they look more alive.
The final step in the Red Fairy's face-up is to add lashes. I just take some human-sized false eyelashes, cut them down to size, and glue those suckers on. Honestly, about the same difficulty level as applying them to myself. And that's it. Her face is all done. Of course, before the doll is finished, I still have a lot of work to do on the body. Now that the wings have cured properly, I can remove the tape and I'm left with actual wings. I'm honestly so happy about the color in these turned out, it's pretty much exactly how I imagined them. To form them into the proper shape, I simply twist the stems of each wing together to make two complete units. Then it's time to attach them. This whole doll has probably been a great example of me tackling more than I should have. I've never done a complete doll custom, and instead of choosing to do a simple one to begin with, I chose to make a fairy with lots of modifications. In the case of the wings, thankfully I decided to go easy on myself. I didn't decide to make them articulated or anything. Instead, the only thought in my head was to drill two holes and stick the wings in there. So, that's what I do. I have this handy dandy electric tool that has a drill bit attachment, so I just drilled two holes into the doll's back. Well, I say just. The bit kept falling out, but we get there in the end. I'm testing every once in a while to see if the wire bases of the wings will fit. Once the holes are the right size, I turn to my old friend Gorilla Glue and place them in. They don't end up perfectly even, but to be honest, I'm willing to have them a little wonky in the back. This doll has also been a good lesson to me in when I need to push myself, and when I need to stop striving for the impossibility of perfection in my art and just let myself be happy with what I can currently accomplish. I'm gonna get better, so I don't need to be mean to myself in the present. Was that too much? Too much? Okay, let's just keep going. With the wings attached, that means body mods are finally done, and it's time to move on to getting the Red Fairy some clothes. What you see on screen now was my first attempt at her dress. I knew pretty much since I finished the concept art that I would be sculpting the bust portion and letting the rest be more flowy. I figured the easiest thing to do would be to use fake flower petals to create a dress, and honestly, I just completely hate how it looks. The petals are more stiff and lifeless than I had wanted, they don't show off her body at all, and because I couldn't for the life of me find petals the length that I was hoping for, there are a lot of layers. Frankly, it's giving more disheveled bird feathers than it is a flowery fairy dress. So scrap that, let's start again. <laughs> I mulled over what to use to create dress option 2 for a long while and randomly thought about crepe paper. Why not try it? I find the right color and cut out a custom petal shape. One layer of the paper ended up being too thin, so I decide to glue two layers together for each petal. I do that a few times, add some paint, and this is what we're working with. I have to admit, I definitely lost a clip in here somewhere. It seems I have a lot to learn about filming for more complex things, so I'm sorry. Here's what you missed though. I used model magic and sculpted a rough base of the dress's bust onto the doll directly. Then I glued on my crepe paper petals to that base, forming a nice flowing skirt. Now I have to go back in with model magic over the petals to make the bust look like berries instead of just that. I formed teeny tiny balls of model magic and squished them into place. Over and over and over until I have this, which of course is going to look better with some paint. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and make her accessories. With a little bit of movie magic, I turn embroidery thread and beads into a doll with necklaces, bracelets, and anklets. Originally I had planned to also make earrings, but I decided against it. Okay, actually to the painting now. With a few layers of varying reds, I wind up with a dress bust that looks pretty much like I had hoped, which is always a good thing to be able to say when creating. With the dress complete, I think it's about time to reattach her head. I did end up giving her hair a chop off camera so it was a much shorter length. Then I heat up her head with boiling water around the neck hole and squish it back onto the neck peg. With pretty disastrous results. I mean, her head is on, so it could be worse, but one of her ears and one of her eyelashes popped completely off, and the other ear was hanging on for dear life. If anyone could give me tips on how to avoid this happening in the future, that would be awesome. Thankfully, these are problems I can fix, but it was definitely a bit disheartening. Nevertheless, we must move forward to her last accessory, a strawberry hat. I sculpt the general shape out of model magic first, and then add teensy tiny 3D seeds. Painting the hat follows the same process as before. I don't end up painting the inside of the hat because it won't be seen, but I think the outside turned out quite cute, don't you? To attach the hat to her head, I glue two sewing pins to the inside so that I can simply stick it onto her. And with that, finally, the Red Berry Fairy is finished. 
Overall, I'm really happy with how she turned out. I'm excited to know I have lots of room to improve in the future, but this was such a fun venture and I feel so proud of how I did on her. My biggest regret is definitely that she doesn't look plus sized with her dress on. I think this is a combination of the dress being loose and the base doll being so small. If I hadn't wanted to use all Ever After High and Monster High bodies for this series so they all match, I probably would have been better off using a Barbie body. Definitely something to consider for future projects. Despite her being a bit off from the concept art, I think she's precious. And of course, she needs a name. After much random name generating, I feel like Bethany suits her. So that concludes this video on the making of Bethany the Red Berry Fairy. Please do let me know your thoughts on her, as well as any tips for future dolls in the comments below. Next up is going to be orange, so stay tuned for that. I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.